till you 20 something. So now, what is the president? So, in Nigeria, wa Agbara kan wa ta wa gan o discover. Agbara yen lo so the president. So, inu wa dun gbogbo wa lati ri, lati gba wa lele ni. Please clap for me because that's the only French I'm speaking tonight. Thank you, sir. Um, just before you have this interview, we have one question for you. I have one question for you. You are the youngest president ever in France. And you are a role model and an inspiration to young people all over the world, and particularly in Africa. So what advice do you have for young Nigerians as regards participation in politics? Is it important and how do you go about it? Well, at the beginning of the interview, that's the beginning. Thank you very much, first of all. I'm very happy to be here with you. And the whole family will come as a fine. Look, I mean, obviously politics is important. And let me just remind you that this place was obviously a cultural place, a music place, but a space for politics as well. I mean, referring to your father, who was not just a musician, he was as well a politician. It's a whole meaning. He was a politician because he wanted to change society. So if I have just one message for young people in here in the shrine tonight, yes, politics is important, yes, be involved, and there is no advice. Thank you, sir. It's over to you. Now, you have an incredibly personal and deep-seated relationship with Nigeria, which has already slightly been foreclosed earlier, but would you like to share with us your fondest memory of your time as an intern in Abuja in 2002? Look, obviously I will not share all these memories and because what happens, the shrine remains in the shrine. But, no, for sure, I discovered Africa at the time and I discovered Nigeria and I, a lot of my friends that time are in the, in the place tonight and I, let me just say well, uh, hello to them but I mean I discovered Nigeria, I discovered Lagos and once I discovered the shrine and I have to say it's something very strong obviously that's a place where I mean, the best music hello. were given and okay. new events always happen huh? But I have to say that my main memory is about this vitality, this strength. Proud people, proud of their culture, proud of their arts, proud of their music. And that's why I probably I have a very different view of Africa than a lot of other people in, uh, in Europe. Because I was educated here. Because, I mean, you are not the one to judge or to decide, especially where for African culture is. This is. And this is the shrine when you speak about music, when you speak about this discussion, when you speak about this kind of exhibition. And I, I do believe that we have to change, we have to build together a new common narrative. And this new common narrative is not based on what is important for European, but it's what is important for African about their culture. And how they want to build their culture, how they want to explain their culture, how they want to promote their culture, and which places are important for them for their culture. And being here is just to recognize the fact that I, I do respect this view. This place is important for African culture. This is why I'm here. France. But I think that we discussed with Goner, he 
in the state, in the city, two thirds of the population is under 35. Which means that two thirds, at least, of your people just never experienced colonization. And it's true for a large part of Africa. And, I mean, it's a common approach between Africa and Europe, and especially between Africa and France, were totally framed by the post-colonial relation. I'm sorry, but the new generation never experiences colonialism. My generation never experienced colonialism. And, I mean, it's part of our history, obviously. You have to recognize the bad and the negative pages of this history. And you have to recognize all the past deeds and face them. But you have to, you have to move forward. And if you are always polluted by this certain vision, you will never move forward. Which means how to build the future for Africa. Yeah, and we have to help them. So, in the spirit of positive movement forward for Africa and Francophonia relations, I teased the audience a little bit online with a little secret that you might be revealing. Can you share with us the announcement that you have to make this evening? Thank you very much. What we wanted to launch this evening is the African Culture Season 2020. We decided to organize everywhere in France for 2020 a series of events about African culture. But the new thing is that it will be for Africa, for African artists, by African artists, and with African leaders, business community, influencers, and African people. What does it mean? Is that first, we appoint an African, a Franco-Senegalese curator, Mrs. Fall, and she is here with us. And thanks very much. And, and her team is made by a series of young curators coming from all over the place in Africa. You will have contemporary artists, painters, I mean, people involved in fashion, in movie, visual arts, architecture, all the different arts existing and present in Africa and especially in Nigeria. It will be about the new generation of artists coming from Africa. It will be organized by them and for them in order to show to France and Europe what it means and not to provide, I mean, always the same visage, the same figure of Africa. And it will be financed and organized by African leaders. All these events will be financed by African business. I want to thank them to be here today and I want to thank Yusuf Dour. We had this discussion a few months ago in Dakar and a lot of uh, your people and that's exactly in line with what we discussed with, uh, with Femi and the family. This cultural season is a unique and brand new event because it will be the face of African culture in Europe but organized by Africa, with Africa, providing what you like, what you love here. Can change the perception of Africa in France and across Europe. Look, I'm not so sure that the image is always negative, but we are, we are a little bit par always paradoxical when we speak about Africa. Some people say this is a tremendous continent, this is a unique place with young people with a lot of opportunities and blah 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 blah. And at the same time, a lot of people say Africa is a place of terrorism, the origins of migration and so on. And probably these two messages are true at the same time. Because Africa is just more than that. This is a living continent, a young continent. And where I do believe it's possible to change 
all this negative message is just because what we need is to have African people speaking about Africa. It's a big problem we have. And I have to say true things about Africa. Because you have, you always replicate, mirror, the European obsession about Africa when you speak about Africa. You always speak, even when you provide tough or positive message, with a sort of biased approach. When I say we need a new narrative, I mean what we need is new people to, to make this narrative. I think what we need is a new generation of artists, of entrepreneurs, of people coming from civil society, of journalists, of, inter of intellectuals coming from Africa and explaining, speaking about Africa in Europe and everywhere. That's the main thing to be organized and the main way to change precisely this look at Africa. A round of applause for the President of France. Monsieur le Président, merci beaucoup pour votre simplicité. Thanks very much and I have to say that this new narrative, all this new thing and what we will try to organize with our policy, with this uh, with this cultural season and this events. I mean, I have a, a huge debt to Femi, Felakuti, Chian and the whole family. Because the family provided, not just in this place, but through its style, its commitments, and especially the different battles of your father, a very strong message. The message that it was possible, even now, to decide your own future. Never forget this message. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, please stand by for a message from Lega State. Can we play the Lega State message? Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to present to you Kazim. So Kazim put this together in the last two hours. He took a picture of you and he drew this while we were waiting for you. I witnessed it, 100%. This is the level of talent that we have in Lagos. This is the level of talent that we have in Nigeria. An 11 year old did this in two hours. I think that deserves the biggest round of applause so far tonight for our young artist Kazim. Thank you so much, Kazim. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for our brilliant 11-year-old artist for putting this together in two hours. This is amazing. Thank you, Kazim. Fantastic job. Thank you very much. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I understand this is the first time that the French President has made an official visit to Lagos. I'm sure that he will enjoy the experience. Honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to you all. And I hope that you are all as excited as I am to be able to see, hear, and experience at first hand this celebration and showcase of Africa's creative industries and inventors. Okay, and I'm the managing director and CEO of Ecobank Nigeria. As some of you may know, Ecobank is a Pan African bank. We have a presence in 33 countries in Africa. And we employ more than 16,000 people and we have branches in more than 1,000 people. The Excellency, President Emmanuel Macron, and all of the Tbilisi's here present this night, we have said this is going to be an informal night, so we're going to excuse protocols. I just want to say a few remarks. I join His Excellency, 
President Mama Jugwari, in welcoming His Excellency President Imani Malcolm to Nigeria, and most especially to Lagos, the fifth largest economy in Africa. We are glad to have you in our midst, in one of Lagos' iconic cultural buildings, the African Shrine, where cultural and social values are exchanged in form of entertainment. Your ascendancy to the presidency of France is obviously a global inspiration to our youth, which form over 60% of the Nigerian population pairs between our two countries. The spirit and energy of Lagos is virtually not different from what you find on the streets of Paris. Please, Mr. President, enjoy the great hospitality that this African shrine is acknowledged to offer over the decades. Everybody say yeah, yeah. yeah. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, sir. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, tonight we are in for a real treat. Because not only is President Macron attending this event, he's actually a part of the show. Come down. So please, please, if you are not part of the immediate protocol team, they're not leaving, the show is still going on, but they just want five minutes to take a view. If he's right up there. Our Bob Femikuti is giving him a tour of the shrine as we speak. If you look towards the back of the hall, I'm sure you can see.